Um, yeah, it's been, uh, we are in December of 2018. I think I got application for Great Lakes exactly 15 years ago, December of 20, 2003. A uh, little bit of background, I did my uh, electronics engineering in um, College of Engineering, Gindi, Anna University. And uh, I started my career as a programmer in Cognizant Technologies. And uh, not a bad start, uh, but um, within a few months I realized that this is not something like the kind of programming I was doing then was not something I wanted to do forever. Uh, my father was a stockbroker at that point of time, so I had some familiarity with finance. I had some curiosity about finance. So I was contemplating switching my career to finance. And um, this was in November or December. Uh, I think I missed the CAT deadline. And uh, I, I, if I, I vaguely remember, it was the year when I think uh, the CAT question paper was kind of leaked or something like that. So I called them and I asked them, um, hey, you know, I know you're going to conduct the exams again. Can I, can you include me in the second time around? They said, no, no, you have to apply earlier. Uh, no issues. But I was growing very impatient. Uh, and uh, that's the time when I learned that uh, actually Great Lakes is actually starting this year. A friend of mine had told me one year ago, uh, 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 Ravi Kumar, he told me that Great Lakes is going to be started soon. Uh, but I saw, I think, an ad in some newspapers. Uh, it was in December. And I thought, okay, let me just go and check. I, I know, I, I, I thought that uh, season I'm not going to apply. But I, did, I just went to this um, Srinagar Colony School. And I think I met uh, uh, people there. I think Narasimhan was there. Um, I had a terrific experience. And uh, I, I took one exam. And my, I, I was, my interview was really hard. There were like seven, eight people, I think. And um, uh, at, at some point of time, uh, I decided to take a plunge. I, was, um, I did not have so much... Uh, 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 expectations about Great Lakes. I have never met Uncle Bala before, never seen any of my cohort members. Uh, so for me it was a call about joining MBA same year or joining the MBA in some other school the next year, applying for CAT and applying broadly. But I think I was very happy, extremely happy with what I saw from Great Lakes at that point of time, even though we did not have a fancy school. Uh, I got answers to all the questions. I started getting some idea about Uncle Bala, talked to my parents and said, okay, this is what I want to do. One of the most important selling points was um, a one-year program. So I think that was the biggest selling point for me because I thought I, I, I was willing to work as much as possible, but I wanted to get into the market like in less than a year. I did not want to go through two years of program and things like that. So that helped. And um, Great Lakes was terrific. Uh, this was an MBA course, which, so you know, engineering, schooling, you have uh, professors coming and lecturing. Uh, maybe I was not uh, uh, curious about what everything was being taught and things like that. Always interested in business. As I said, my dad used to be a stockbroker. And um, I instantly liked the classes and uh, I like all my friends in the Pioneers Patch. We had extreme set of talent that joined us. And uh, we also had nursing Rauf, a dear friend of mine, uh, uh, who is no more uh, because uh, 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 may, may his soul rest in peace. He's an amazing guy. And I knew when I met him and others that, uh, you know, I made the right decision for me. And uh, we took everything in stride. And Uncle Bala gave a very motivating talk and all of us worked hard. Uh, but again, this is 2003. Uh, you did not have too much of jobs and things like that then. Uh, but you know, all of us ended up making okay, in my opinion. I, I, mean, I ended up doing a lot better than anybody expected for me, including myself. I joined a small uh, uh, hedge fund startup uh, in um, uh, yeah, 2005. I was one of the initial team of equity research analysts. I was covering U.S. stock markets, 
and i did really well there and um i was uh, analyst and then later head of research i was managing a team of 50 people at some point of time so i was doing extremely well no complaints life was lot easy and <clears throat> sometime during the program i think uncle bola said hey you know uh i think you could uh, 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 do a phd program so i decided okay let me do a phd and uh, one thing uncle bola always does is he makes things appear so easy so he said he finished his phd in 2 years or something and oh, uncle bola took 2 years i'm not that bad i can probably take 3 or 4 and i requested bola to give a recommendation letter he did and uh, he delivered on his promise i got into emory university goiswet a business school for the phd i couldn't finish in 2 in 3 in 4 it took me 6 years and i barely made it it was extremely stressful uh probably the most difficult thing i have ever done in my life uh i was going through depression and stuff like that and one of the reasons why i'm still attached to uncle bola is his stories are extremely motivating uh, i think he narrated to us how when he was finishing his phd uh i think his dad passed away and how he has to battle through that and stay focused so that was like a motivating factor for me and uh so i was able to graduate now i am a faculty i'm an assistant professor in finance in george washington university so uh i would say uh, i um i have i feel um uh, i have been lucky in terms of having such a career and i'm extremely glad and thankful for where i am and i also would like to highlight that none of this would have been possible if not for the decision to join great lakes in early 2004 uh one of the few things i really liked like this was uh, in the curriculum was as i said the main aspect or main attracting factor for me at least i'm not speaking for everybody is um uh, uh it was a one year mba program and i was willing to put as much effort in terms of gaining as much knowledge as possible and also because my dad was a stock broker i had some familiarity with business i've been reading a uh, uh, business magazines and newspapers for a few years also over confident i thought i could finish in one year and because i wanted to go to finance i also looked at the team of i think uh, uh, the visiting faculty because then i don't think we had much of a full time faculty so i looked at the visiting faculty what are the kind of uh, uh, people who are going to come in and uh, i also uh, so we had excellent uh, faculty coming in teaching us accounting aspects finance aspects i checked the curriculum i still remember uh, uh, classes i took i think marty subramanian from nyu uh, uh, gave a talk on um, uh, he, he at least handled something on derivatives we had sham sundar talking about experimental economics we had X- sp kothari handling uh, uh, they did not have a full course but even having even 2 hours or 3 hours of uh, thing was extremely inspiring for me at least so i was totally focused on finance we also had excellent faculties in other parts but uh, uh in in my case i think all the courses that that were tailored i really enjoyed having the courses especially interacting with the faculty picking their brains knowing uh, uh what they know and having you know uh, uh, discussions with uh, uh, other students about what is going on in this world how to interpret contemporary affairs through the lens of what we learn from the classroom so uh, it has been uh, but you know the world is changing so this is another thing i was talking to uncle bola earlier i think the curriculum we had then was adapted to american standards and which actually helped me get a job in a form which was catering to a us client so the accounting i studied was tailored towards us accounting and immediately i was ready for the market where i was covering us stocks 
and uh, so for me understanding financial statements was immediately uh, i was like job ready at that point of time and uh, so i think everything was said i did not uh, the training period was not that long for me so in in terms of corporation where i was working for so it was all good but another thing when we talk about curriculum is the world is changing and uh, i was talking to bala earlier uh, uncle bala earlier and for example when i joined uh, this hedge fund this was in 2005 i think 13 years ago uh, all i wanted to have a career in finance was just an mba from great lakes was good enough because the curriculum was perfect and the techniques that we need to be an expert in is some kind of valuation modeling and microsoft excel is all you need uh but nowadays the world has changed a lot in the last 12 years uh like in finance people are using algorithmic trading machines are replacing analysts in many places not completely but in many places and one of the things i was talking to uncle earlier uh, uh is uh even before i asked this question he just said great lakes is positioning itself uh in introducing machine learning techniques analytics as having a core part of uh, uh let's say um uh, at the core part of the great lakes curriculum and in my opinion that is um, being a step ahead of the curve because working in finance both as an, uh, a practitioner and now as an academic i find that not only in finance all over in different aspects of business everybody is looking towards acquiring more information from data this happens in sports this happens in politics in sports you can uh, like money ball and uh, books like that they may write it in politics there are websites like 538 all kind of businesses are looking at it companies are looking at it so uh, given this is the change and uncle said they are in- actively incorporating this as the part of the curriculum so i think that would uh, um uh, th- th- i think that's a great addition it would help a uh, uh, future great lakers uh, uh, to adapt uh, to the job market and be ready for whatever they're going to see as i said 15 years ago uh, i learned some american accounting techniques and finance helped me but now the whole world is moving towards big data and constantly changing and staying in touch with the uh, what is going on in industry i think uh, will be definitely a strength for great lakes um one thing that we have to look at is what companies want and our skill set uh, must always match what companies want so like as i said earlier 15 years ago what companies wanted was people who knew business who knew finance at least in my field who can read and understand company's balance sheet come up with insightful recommendation as to whether to buy a stock or sell a stock when i was working for a mutual fund nowadays there still remains the case but the industry is changing now what people are doing is uh, now algorithms can read a news report and then say whether the news is positive or not which was my job 15 years ago and i'm not saying the algorithms probably do a better job than me they might i'm just saying but it's but that's where the future is companies would rather have an algorithm which they can pay off the shelf than pay me a lot of money in doing all these kind of things and because that is the future if i had entered the market with what i learned in 2003 i am not competitive for the market because i am going to demand a huge salary because that's what i want but the companies have moved on to doing something else now they want automated trading they want everything wanted to be automated which means the skill sets they are looking for is some kind of programming some kind of uh, uh, understanding of statistics analytics getting inference from the data maybe i'm mean, amazon aws and so on so if students are not prepared for it they they will be at a disadvantage in the market 
and one way a business school or any university for that matter can help them do is nobody can prepare anybody 100% because most of the learning in my opinion comes from the job but in my opinion you cannot totally be unprepared so let's say i'm going and attending an interview and all they are saying is hey we are looking at algorithmic trading where or we are doing some kind of textual analysis and things like that i cannot just go there and then say hey no, i don't know this so then i come across as a person who does not care where the industry is going but let's say if i go to them in an interview and say hey i know this is where uh, uh, the market is going and these are the things i have learned in great lakes or in another university these are the skill sets i have and if you hire me you don't have to give me a lot of training because i'm self motivated i learn all these things myself i can easily adapt to work environment then that's an important resource for any company and uh, uh, companies are willing to hire that so i think uh, so I, i think doing a management course is still relevant i hope uh, i have not given the wrong impression uh nowadays at least in finance and other areas you know the machines are coming and i'm not saying they're stealing our jobs uh, i hope i did not make that point because uh, 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 because um, so even now we are looking at automated cars people are saying um, uh, if automated car technology goes to um, driving uh, trucks then all these truck driver jobs are going to vanish i am not that skeptical uh, i think uh, the technology makes lives of everybody better i still think jobs are going to be there but we can just go back in time like initially there was this hand looms before the power looms came in the power looms are more efficient yes some people who only know hand looming are going to lose their jobs but people if you can adapt to working in power looms they get they had good jobs same thing in every aspect before initially i think there used to be a typist uh, who used to type everything and then after microsoft word and everything came i think some of those jobs went away but if you are constantly adapting with technology you are still going to be relevant the only way somebody can be non relevant is totally ignoring the changes around us and then say hey my education is over i learned let's say looking at me 15 years ago hey i learned finance i learned in great lakes one of the greatest colleges i don't want to learn anything give me a job i i, I don't think that's uh, going to be well suited for industry so coming back to the management i think it's very important even new technologies now managers have to understand how they it promotes efficiency and how it improves business insights and i totally think anybody who can use all this latest technology will be very competitive in the market as i said this is happening in industry and in politics so sorry especially in sports before sports few coaches they use their insights and things like that now if you look at uh, let's say basketball um the whole nba landscape has changed since they brought in analytics and the team of analytics in nba now they are not even taking long two pointers because long two pointers have the same probability of conversion as short three pointers and but you get one less point so what happens is analytics spotted the success rate of each shot in every part of the basketball court and coaches who adapted incorporate that in the coaching and the teams which have been open to analytics have been the most successful so coaching like you can think of management as the job of the coach taking care of all the players if you accept embrace changes in technology you are going to be an effective coach you are going to lead an effective team and this is my opinion of it i think the role of management is going to be there and any manager who embraces the change around us their company is going to be extremely successful um, 
I work on um, uh, asset pricing, so I'm, I research in finance. Asset pricing is uh, a field, a subfield of finance rather, which looks at the behavior of investors and the behavior of, let's say, stock prices, which is my interest area. And within this huge field, uh, I work on a small subfield, which is about behavioral finance. My area, research area mostly is on attention constraints, especially uh, in psychology, uh, psychological literature, and even all of us know this, uh, we cannot pay attention to like multiple events at the same time. Uh, let me, if I have to say it in different terms, um, human beings, there is limits to how much attention we can pay at the same time, like the difficulty of multiple processing. I have to be very specific here. For example, we can always listen to a song and go for a walk. And that's not an issue. But let's say you are sitting in a classroom and listening to a lecture. Let's say you get a message in WhatsApp and you start replying to that WhatsApp. You have no idea what the professor is saying for the next few minutes. So there is some difficulty in multitasking, which involves so much of your brain power and attention. So we can only focus on one aspect at a time. So why is it this important in my aspect of research? For example, what uh, uh, one of my dissertation topics is uh, how simultaneous events affects, affects our attention to a specific company news. For example, in last week, the stock prices have been so volatile, especially in US, uh, the stock prices, I think, have been going down like 1%, 2%. Yesterday, stocks went up 5%, which are huge moves market-wide. So when such a big moments happen market-wide, and let's assume there is another company which is coming up with some company-specific news. Let's say there is a huge moment market-wide, some Brexit happens, let's say some demonetization or something happens. And there is a small company, let's say Infosys, comes up with earnings. Which of these two events we will focus on? And uh, uh, I hypothesize that we'll be focusing more on the major market movements. And therefore, because of our attention constraints, we don't spend much time processing this firm news. And as a consequence, the companies which are coming up with news, investors will react slowly. And therefore, the stock prices also will reflect information slowly and there could be potential for profit making in these kind of events. So this is one aspect of research that I'm doing. I also have other work on attention constraints. And another interest area of mine is um, how liquidity, you know, what we mean by liquidity is um, the ability to buy or sell large volumes of an asset at a very low cost. So another strand of my work also focuses on how liquidity affects stock prices and uh, so it's a topic or subfield called market microstructure. Uh, I would say that is also a part of my research interest. And uh, yeah, so far, uh, these are very exciting topics to me at least. That's why I'm interested in them. So yeah, I hope, uh, uh, I, I hope I'll be able to produce some really interesting work in this area. That's a tough one. Uh, so one thing I know, uh, even though I was an analyst, uh, it's hard to forecast. And it's hard to know how, what things will be 10 years from now. But one thing for sure, based on the experience with my students, is if, like I, I mentioned earlier, if you have some kind of programming experience, let's say you know programming language like Python, which is widely used for data science related work. And if you know some kind of statistical techniques, which people use in finance, 
uh, for example, it could be some kind of uh, uh, machine learning techniques. Let's say, um, I'll say nearest neighbors, decision trees, support vector machines, neural networks, something like that. Uh, deep learning. If you familiarize yourself, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to build a robot. But if you know the basics, if you can write a small program, if I give you a data set, you are comfortable working with it. I am seeing at least, uh, at least some of my students are seeing traction in the market uh, when they are comfortable with these aspects. So I can see that they are definitely at a competitive edge over other uh, uh, students when they inculcate these skill sets over and above finance knowledge. Because this intersection, it could be finance, it could be marketing. A pure programmer doesn't know business, doesn't know data science. So it's not well suited. A pure marketer who does not know data science is not well suited. So I would say anybody who is in the intersection of these two areas, it could be human resources, it could be marketing, it could be finance, it could be accounting. If you can gain some of uh, the data science and programming techniques, statistics, analytics, big data, and you're also expert in this, I think uh, uh, th these people will be very competitive. Their careers, uh, 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 they'll have wonderful careers. At least that's my opinion.